Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Writer here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is of a patient who attended with reduced hearing in both ears. They inform me that they visited another clinic uh, last week um, who advised them that they had cleared their ears out um, of earwax and dead skin. However, the patient still felt that their ears were blocks, in particular this there right ear, and they were recommended to see me by a good friend of theirs who's previously visited the clinic. So upon attending, the patient presented with some non-occluding, um, dead skin and dry earwax laterally near the entrance, which, um, which I removed almost instantly, actually. However, you can see this patient's ear canal is lined with really thickened dead skin. In addition, their eardrum, especially posteriorly, the back part of the eardrum, is also heavily lined with dead skin. And that, for me, I felt was the root cause, because although there was that bit of wax and dry skin near the entrance, it was what I would call non-occluding. Um, it's not going to um, prevent sound waves from travelling into the ear, and it's certainly not going to affect the mobility of the eardrum. So what I'm doing here is uh, just detaching some dead skin from the patient's ear canal, the front part. I then went in with some forceps to try and get a good grip and purchase and extract this skin. You will see in a moment I do remove a big tail of skin. So I'm just trying to get a good grip here first. Sometimes when you use the forceps to get the skin, the, as you insert the forceps, the skin has a tendency... Um, of moving away so you just have to get a good grip and we have got this here I've just brought this to the entrance and I'm just now gonna just wriggle the forceps left to right and you can see there's a thick layer of skin there if you watch till the end of the video I've got a, a still image of that during that process I did manage to release some of this dead skin off the patient's eardrum but there's still quite a lot left so we're gonna have to go back in a moment and remove that the patient is a um in their 90s and as we get older we're more prone to developing dead skin in the ear and um, skin that fails to migrate and a lot more dry skin and that's because as we do get older our skin cells are less able to retain fluid um, therefore the skin dries out and when you've got dry skin in the ear uh, there's a lot more friction so this skin should naturally come out by itself like a conveyor belt your ear um, to, uh, manufactures skin as the skin dies it's replaced by another layer of skin underneath and the dead skin is pushed away upwards off the ear canal and the ear has developed over millennia um, to prevent our ears getting blocked with skin because if everyone's skin just remained in the ear they would have problems like this gentleman would and they would need their ears um, de-waxed and cleared on a regular basis so this ear has evolved, so the skin as it dies, it should migrate sideways out of the ear, like a conveyor belt. But if you've got dry dry skin, you get more friction to the skin. Um, it rubs up against the canal wall and it slows down the rate of deterioration or halts it completely. And then we get a build-up. So just using the fine end, um, you can see I've cleared the entrance. There's a few hairs there, so that's the first bend. I'm just trying to start peeling some of the skin at the bottom of the ear canal now and of course we're going to have to remove some of the eardrum now it's not possible to remove every little last grain of dead skin or slither of dead skin what we're trying to do with this patient um, is just allow them to hear again that's the main thing this is going to be a chronic problem I feel for the patient as well so they are going to have to tend on a regular basis do they do wear hearing aids and hearing aids is another possible reason um, as to why the skin can't migrate naturally and that's because the hearing aid inadvertently can push the skin back in and prevent the migration and um, the conveyor belt motion of the skin uh, itself traveling out of the ear. So I've just put some olive oil medical grade spray. I was trying to avoid it because the patient does wear a hearing aid. Um, they're going to leave wearing the hearing aid so I wanted to keep their ears as dry as possible but I just needed to soften the skin. It's like a blanket you can see it's a really thick blanket and the olive oil spray really really helps uh, the olive oil spray I use it's medical grade it's a spray it's a company called clear um, actually uh, a healthcare advisor for clear so we're in the process of developing some new products um, 
And if you are interested in purchasing it, there's links in the description. Please note we only ship to the UK. Um, we also sell to specialists in bulk. So if you are a specialist, visit our website, um, select sign in, register as a professional, and you'll get access to our trade shop. And if a member of the public, you, want, you wish to purchase it, you can just visit our website. Again, we've got an online public shop where you can purchase a spray. And we've also got some other ear care products available as well. So I'm just using the fine end. You can see we've got a beautiful view here. So this skin, I'm just trying to tease it as well as best as I can. Um, this skin, this undercoat, isn't quite ready to be shedded. It's still quite firmly. It is dying. It's almost, it's in the process of shedding, but it's not quite ready. But just at the back here, there's still a bit of skin on the eardrum. I'm just trying to, I'm sparring with this. I don't know if the skin's going to come away. I don't want to poke into the eardrum itself. So I've just gone posteriorly and I can see now there that I'm able to remove the skin because it was coming away. Now that ridge, of um, you might see this uh, that white ridge just below the suction probe there and it kind of, it's like a semicircular, at the, the bottom hemisphere, it goes all the way around. We call that the annulus. An annulus is a piece of fibro um, cartilage and it surrounds the perimeter of the eardrum and it gives the eardrum its strength and its tautness. It pulls the eardrum down. Think about a tent and you have your tent, your strings and your tent hole, um, um, poles and it stretches the tent. I'll just come back to that in a moment. So you can see I just I removed that off the patient's eardrum. So the eardrum's fully visible now. So I, I'm really pleased with what we've done here already. There, there is a, a layer of skin there, uh, an undercoat if you like, but it would just be too dangerous and uncomfortable for the patient to remove and it's not really going to add any benefit to the patient because this is going to be a chronic problem for them now. Uh, but the outer layers of dead skin are all removed. This skin, as I said, it's not quite ready to remove. Now that annulus is quite prominent, which suggests to me that the eardrums have retracted posteriorly. So the eardrums pulled inwards and that annulus as a result is, it feels like it's protruding outwards. It's just some dead skin at the roof of the ear canal. Uh, the patient was extremely pleased. They were so overjoyed that they could hear again. Um, gave me a lovely compliment. They have had their ears obviously uh, de-waxed over the years, as I mentioned, in the 90s. And um, they were very pleased that they found me. They said that it was the best treatment they've had, so I'm very pleased. And um, hopefully the patient will come back and recommend more people. So again, I'm just hovering around just to see if there's any more loose pieces of skin that I can remove that's ready to be shedded. Just in the back part of the ear canal here. And there's just some crusted dead skin more laterally near the end, but just past the first bend here on the back part of the ear canal, you can see all those hairs. So these hairs, uh, when you see the hairs, you know you're, we're on the uh, outer third of the ear canal, the cartilaginous portion. That's where the hair follicles are. You don't find hair follicles on the bony part of the ear canal, the inner two thirds. So that's the patient's eardrum. Um, just think, I think I'm just going to go back just to see if I can, this comes away. And see, it's just, just not ready to be peeled. So we don't want to push our luck. I've just bent the fine end suction probe there as well, just to give myself a better angle. But the eardrum's fully visible. Patient's eardrum's now uh, mobile. Uh, when they put the hearing aid in, they notice a huge difference. This is their left ear again, so it, it's just a bit disappointing that... I understand, I, I, did, I did explain to the patient, removing that skin off the eardrum is a bit more complex, so um, I wouldn't expect a lot of specialists to be able to do that, but... They could at least remove this. I, I can't see a reason why they're not able to remove this dry skin laterally. Um, I think the patient was a bit anxious upon attending. Um, they are partially sighted as well, so the hearing's so crucial to them. And they're a bit um, unsure because obviously they've not been, although they've had, they've had some great feedback, but they were really hoping upon leaving they were going to hear them. They were a bit they were fearing the worst that we're not gonna it's not gonna make much difference because they, they weren't sure whether there was any wax left that's that's the thing so they went elsewhere they were told the wax was removed but the patient took a, a long shot and felt that the ear wasn't fully clean and they were hoping that i was able to help in that respect so they were greatly relieved by the end of the appointment the left ear is extremely bendy and twisty and narrow 
um, I think I had to ask the patient just to keep their jaw still because um, the, there's when you move your jaw when you have when you perform your action it's always in a way good that patients are talking because it means that they're relaxed but if you over um, exert your jaw your ear canal contracts and the ear can move and so we're in the ear, so it's going to be really careful. So I've just put some oil in again, just to help peel away, soften the skin. You can see it's all come away. And the ear canal, it veers off. So you're going in, past the second bend, back to the left. You can just about see the eardrum there, so it's really in the distance. And they've got a very prominent, what we call inferior recess, and also anterior recess, as we approach the eardrum, I think this is when the patient was talking a bit, so I just had to settle down. There we are. Um, as we approach the eardrum, the ear canal narrows and then it widens again, and that creates a trench called the inferior recess. So it's like a little basin um, to the bottom of the eardrum, and also it creates an alcove to the front part of the ear canal adjacent to the eardrum. Quite often you can get wax stuck there, for example, or dead skin. If you do get water in your ear, which I strongly recommend, uh, not recommend, sorry, water can also get trapped there. And in this instance, we've got some oil that's trapped there. So I've just I've had to use some oil to soften this and some oil is trapped. So we are going to go in in a moment and just suction out the oil that's got trapped in the basin. But before that, I'm just hovering around just to see if I can get any more skin away. Similarly to their right ear, the skin is it's just this undercoat skin. I've got multiple layers of skin out already. So I've cleared a lot of the skin lining the ear can already. But this is the undercoat. It's just not quite ready to re remove. You can see it's it's just about to shed itself. But it's still quite firmly attached to the ear canal. And we've got to be careful. You don't want to overwork that skin. Because if you do, the skin it provides a protective barrier. And if it's not quite ready to be shed, uh, to be removed, it means the underlayer is also not fully developed. When the underlayer is fully developed, the next layer of skin is fully de developed, it will itself push this layer of skin away and that will f cause the, the skin to detach itself from the canal wall. So if you remove dead skin or dying skin, so this is more dying, it's not quite dead yet, before it's time, there's the the ear canal is more exposed, you don't have that protective layer, so you've got to be careful. So I'm just mopping up near the entrance now. I think I've got that oil away from, from the eardrum too. And that's the eardrum, so it's intact. There's no dead skin on the eardrum, which is great. Again, they could hear much better. There's just a little bit of oil there. And that wasn't going to come away, so we're just going to leave that. Once more, I'm just going to mop up just past the entrance. There's a bit of a blind spot when we enter our ears to the rear. So in the case of this, the left ear, to the right-hand side, there can sometimes be a blind spot and you can get pieces of wax and dead skin hiding away. So just entered that blind spot. I'm just gently hovering over. This is the cartilage portion, so here we can apply a bit of pressure. I would, wouldn't have dreamt doing that on the bony part. And that's that piece of skin from the first right ear, the large piece of skin that I removed using forceps. You can just see how thick it is. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys, and you're taking care and keeping well. Do stay tuned. I've got loads more videos to upload in due course. Thank you. Bye.